here we go. All right. So Faith, go ahead. And we've got, you know, we've got a bit of a smaller group here. So if you guys have any thoughts or questions or whatever, like here we are, Faith is here. Go ahead. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Or thoughts or reflections from the session? No? No? Hi. Can you hear me? Can you yes. hear me? Yes. yes. Right. Yes. I think when I look at your work, what I love about it is it's what God is saying to you about your life with him. You know, it's really precious, I think, you know? And I, I haven't really done that. I haven't really, you know, like I read my Bible, etc. But I haven't really explored that area of things. So I think that's lovely, you know, really lovely. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I love the I way think... you... Oh, sorry. No, no, carry on. I, I, the, uh, when you were sharing about the the painting that you weren't happy with so you put it aside and let it dry and then came back to it and then put it aside and let it dry and then you came up with that phenomenal final piece was just so reassuring because so often you can do something you think oh you know but the the fact that God knew what you know you were doing got you to that final place and how that was can be the same in our lives the layers and then put aside and layers changed and put aside was really encouraging oh excellent you know what it's it's funny because life's a journey and i think a lot of us we see somebody who looks perfect so in in our eyes things look really kind of nice in their lives you, you'll see somebody and think wow i wish i was like that or whatever and you actually don't realise what has gone on in the background to get that person to where they are, how much heartbreak or pain or healing and that God actually just brings into different people's lives. And I think sometimes life is can be incredibly hard and there's many a times we would just want to trash whatever's going on. So, Lord, I'm just not happy down here. I'm really not happy and just want to throw the ball in and just... God says, you know what, just put it aside for a moment, just take a rest. And I think sometimes the whole dormancy thing, <laughs> I looked up, the God gave me when I was, um, had the sense the flyer through um, last week, and I was like, Lord, okay, so what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to say? And one of the words that God gave to me was dormancy. And so I looked up dormancy, and dormancy, basically it means something alive, but is currently sleeping. So you can think of, say, a butterfly is um, when it's in in transition in the cocoon stage, it is in dormancy. Um, a seed is hidden in the darkness in the ground in a place of dormancy, awaiting for a season for it to come back to life. Um, and then God gave me a picture of a volcano, a sleeping volcano is is kind of um, in a place of dormancy. And, and I think sometimes there's a lot bubbling up and there's a lot of inside of people that they're like, Lord, I've got all this going on, but if I'm the volcano, I'm like, Lord, if I let it all out, I'm gonna completely obliterate what's in my path. And I think sometimes depending, some people are the seed and some people are the butterfly in progress and other people are like the volcano. And I think, Sometimes it's like we say, Lord, but I would obliterate that. And God says, you know what? what? Look into what a volcano is and does. So I took the word volcano and I said, I, I Googled and I said, Google, what good comes out of a volcano? <laughs> and he apparently it is some of the most fertile land in the world is where a volcano is. It produces some of the best crops and stuff because the fertility of that which lay dormant inside when it exploded and it had flooded the, the plains, the, 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 the several qualities from it, it becomes um, the water can drain easily and it's full of nutrients. 
there's kind of a whole load going on on both aspects of it. Um, unfortunately, I don't have it with me, but I've made some necklace necklaces using um, pieces of lava um, that had been milled into um, lovely beads that were quite flat and um, pieces. And I'd made a, a whole necklace out of it. Um, what we think of as sometimes can be destructive or really hard, God says, you know what? Beauty can come out of that place. Beauty can come out. Where you think you have no beauty, or if you do, you might bring harm. God says, you know what? I will bring something that is beautiful, something that is good, and something that is going to bless out of that place. So whichever place you're in, and I think, um, yeah, did you want to say something, Heather? Oh, I did. Okay. Hi, Faye. Hi, Faye. Hi. Can, can you hear me okay? I can. Oh, good. So I don't know if you're familiar with Bill Gother, but back in the 80s, he used to do these, uh, I used to go to these seminars and he did these chalk talks. And mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, the uh, Holy Spirit's been speaking to me about Lorraine and your teaching, you need to do some chalk talks. <laughs> I was like, oh, I, now I am an artist, but it, I don't know, you know, you use two different sides of your brain, you know, when you're teaching and then when you're doing art and I'm like, so I never did, but I'm wondering if you can pray about that. Can you pray that, mm -hmm. pray over me? Like if this is God, then somehow give me something, um, a way of doing it. Cause I don't see anybody doing it anymore. Uh, I'd like to bring it back. What your creativity or sorry, what is it you're wanting the to chalk, bring back? They're called chalk talks. So chalk when people, talk. when they, cause I teach, but when people teach, then they do artwork with their teaching. Okay. Yeah. Illustrate. I'm an illustrator. So they illustrate. And so, um, <laughs> oh, you know what? <laughs> <It's beautiful. laughs> this is, this, no, but seriously, this is beautiful because of um, that is exactly. I would say I'm at the stage where I'm in the artist playground. I'm really, um, it's my gift has been dormant for a while, and I'm in a in a place of discovery, a place of um, playing around. And you know what? I think maybe God wants you to start playing around. Start using and playing with the things that you have. And don't be limited by what you previously was. Because I, I don't know if you saw the bit at the beginning. And I showed the progress of some of the stuff that I did when I was at school. Um, I'm not who I was when I started. And I'm not who I'm yet to become. But there has been transitions and changes from my childlike paintings and my childlike pieces um, to the pieces that I did when I was at college, when I'm learning the, the, um, the skills in the trade as such, to when I'm left to the creativity that God has given me and I'm uh, expressing that. And I would just say, you know what? A good place is just experiment and play. When I went to David's tent this year and the pictures that I was showing at the end of the video call um, on YouTube, I did those in a sketchbook. And the reason I felt God say, bring back your sketchbook. Whereas when I was at actually college, I didn't actually enjoy doing the sketchbook in that much, <laughs> if I'm honest. But I felt God saying, bring back the sketchbook because that is where you work out your thoughts. That's where you work out your ideas and develop them. And it's where God can bring inspiration and take you through the idea and the processing. And, and where, where is the, I had a sketchbook here somewhere. I've put it down somewhere. Maybe it's not meant to be. One the thing one I want to point out, I don't know if you can see behind Faith, but um, on the wall, she has, I don't know what that is, what, that has your stomach from when you're pregnant with your first child, right? Yes. What is it? Like paper mache or something? No, I had, I was, I basically had a, a cast done of when I was pregnant, nine months pregnant. I just felt good. <laughs> I originally wanted 
a body cast done in my first year of marriage and then one done at nine months pregnant just to see the process and the, the change I didn't I got my husband to try and do the first one and <laughs> he's not creative he's from an accountant background and it came out terribly <laughs> we didn't <laughs> so then nothing happened but 10 years later when I got pregnant with my first at nine months I had a cast done that's what that is um <laughs> so cool um <laughs> uh, you know what i've no idea the one sketchbook that i actually wanted i think it, i've made it disappear no i haven't it's here so you know what going back to the sketchbook thing god's just said to me you know what sometimes you need to strip if, if it's something you haven't done for a while go back to the basics so i've literally done a little bit of going back to the basics and I started I've been doing a little bit of color theory <laughs> where I'm taking the colors I did black one side one white the other side and seeing what can go the, the different developments of each of those or taking for instance um and this is stuff I would have hated doing when I was studying is just doing these sort of basic color theory pieces but then what God showed me is um again all I took in this one all I took was blues and yellows but there is not a blue or just yellow it's greens that have come out of it and I think sometimes strip back and start playing in a form in a sketchbook you don't feel precious about it if it isn't a brilliant piece that you produce um it doesn't matter because it's your sketchbook it's a development of ideas it's a development of thoughts and if you like to go big I thought for in this session I've actually on my table underneath this lot of stuff here if I move it out of the way is I've got a lining paper if I move that out of the way and I would say if you like to work big get more of the lining paper that you would line for, for decorating it. Don't feel, have something that you don't feel precious about. Get pencils out, get pens out, get, it doesn't matter if it's kids' poster paints, if that's all that you have at home, whether it's inks, whether it's whatever. Um, when I was doing the start of the session, I felt that when he showed me the thing of dormancy, I just took the one thing of seed and thought, let me play with it. And this is what I produced. So on the top one here, this is just fine line pens. The middle one here, this is with watercolour. This one's with oil paint. The bottom one here is um, just pastels, chalk pastels. This is a dip pen and ink. And this one is just um, a, a B pencil. And for those that don't know what B pencil is, you can get different grades of softness in the lead and a B is the start of the artistic ones where you go up to a really soft one. And what I wanted to show you is with the same word dormancy and me thinking about a C, I've produced six very different type of images. And each one of those images, if I showed you it alone, would potentially provoke a different response in each of you. You might find something different from it. And had I not told you it was a seed in dormancy, you would might not even, <laughs> you'd never even necessarily get that that was what inspired me to make them. And I would just say, play, 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 play. I, I quite like having neat little boxes. So I use masking tape and um, was squiggling around and I did small boxes because I know I'd spend forever if I did it on a big piece of paper for each different talk, different one. So just play and um, allow God to use your natural gifts and ask him to inspire you with whatever is around you. Um, so... Do you, Faith, do you want to do a little um, just prayer for Lorraine? And then 
Yeah. Actually, what might be good is if we take your theme of dormancy and seed and spend about five minutes or five to seven minutes, we'll put some music on and people can create something and then we could share it or go into breakout rooms and give each other words based on like what you just um, showed us. Mm -hmm. Does that sound cool? Yeah, that sounds fine. Great. So do you just mind saying a prayer over Lorraine and I'll get some music ready and maybe you can give us a little more, I don't know, like instruction on how we could kind of create our own seed uh with the lord and then we'll take some time to do that practice practice doing it <laughs> <laughs> okay father god i just thank you for the spirit of creativity i thank you lord that <laughs> creativity is your spoken word and when you spoke life happened and so lord i speak over lorraine right now and i Lord, because she, she says she does illustration and stuff like that. Lord, she's got the skills and abilities there. So, Lord, I ask that you'll give her inspiration and revelation of how to um, just pick up her pens and her paints to express what you are saying in these um, uh, while messages are going on or whether she's speaking or other people are speaking, that you'll just give her the ability to just quickly note down. Because I'm, people are visual people, Lord, and we, we all use our eyes to see. And, Lord, I thank you that you've also given us spiritual eyes. So, Lord, I ask that you will use the natural to empower the spiritual in people, that it will bring... Um, when you take something visually as well as with your ears, you're using more than just the one sense. And somehow it seems to linger more. It has more of a, an embossing in our memory of what we, we're doing. So, Lord, I ask that you give her the ability to communicate that as she works, that you would just inspire and give her revelation and that she will have an impact on those around her as she starts to pick up um, and play with this, um, with this storyboarding and storytelling through um, messages in Jesus' name. I love that. That was so good. And and I just want to add to that. There's a lady who does prophetic art on stage here at Bethel Austin. Her name's Maddie. She's wonderful. Um, but she was talking about, too, how she just, like, she, there were several times she just stood in front of the board and was like, God, what, you know, what do I do? And she just put her brush on and she just started to do it as she was standing there and so I think there's a lot like that was such a prophetic word of what Faith said about just start playing and I think that's you know I, I'm not an artist but from what I heard about artists musicians it's hard for people to get out of like the structures a little bit like oh but you know it's hard to play sometimes but I just feel like that is a word from the Lord and just just to start to go with it even if you don't understand it because the Holy Spirit is the one that's really going to guide you in it um, as you go and kind of like, as I've been doing these prophetic workshops here in Austin with a couple, like twice in the same home group, it's fascinating how the more that they, like a lot of them, several, there's only like nine or 10 of us or something, but two of them, two or three of them said that in the first week it was hard, but the second week was easier. And I think that the more, as you do it, it the easier it'll get. And then there's also Definitely. prophetically one of those things that like, just open your mouth, kind of just put paper to pen or whatever. And as you do it, that's when the Lord tends to release things as well. So just kind of all the above. So, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's, there's a freedom in just, I think the hardest thing is to actually start. And I think there's, there's often a hindrance for actually just starting. And I think sometimes it is a case of just create a space where you can just I've noticed with the kids and everything else, I found it quite hard to just get time aside to do the creative stuff. So I've um, I've learned a few ways to help that. And I've created, I don't know whether any of you have heard of a wet palette, but um, a wet palette is basically, it's effectively a box. <laughs> it's effectively a box. Inside the box, You've got either parchment paper or like um, you can use a piece of kitchen towel and you put it at the bottom, you wet it and you put it at the bottom of your box. Then you put your paints on a piece of greaseproof paper on top of it 
And because of the water beneath it, it will keep your paints active. Because one of my problems was I found it so much effort to lay everything out every time I wanted to do something that I just ended up not doing anything. And by just preparing a palette, and if if you find that that doesn't work for you or you you haven't got a shallow pot, I the other thing that I found was... Um, what kind of paint is that, um, Faith? This that one, this one's acrylics, and acrylics are known for drying incredibly quickly. So this, believe it or not, is probably at least two weeks old. This palette, and what I then do is I use a piece of grease proof in another. This is just an A4, an A4. Um, it's meant to hold documents, so you can actually get just um, boxes that are meant just to hold documents and again just use a piece of kitchen towel at the bottom and a piece of grease proof on top and I use the wet palette and then I use this as my mixing palette and I've actually got I, I actually I've got a couple of these so I, I keep my blues and my yellows and my reds and stuff in two different mixes when I'm on the go and I found that this just helped me to be creative more regularly and to play around a little bit more whereas if I had five or 10 minutes, I didn't mind having a little dabble because I didn't have to set everything up from scratch. Mm. And in the same way, if you like watercolor, um, you can either use obviously um, the old fashioned tins where you've got all the colors, one's just gone flying, <laughs> in the box. And if you like it in the, um, in the tubes of watercolor, again, you can lay out your palette and just put masking tape over the top of it to keep it covered when you're not using it. And all you do is cover the masking tape off and you've got a palette that's ready to go for you just to be able to play and start having that playground to just explore. And I've found what's really also been quite helpful for me is, um, I think Heather mentioned, there was a, there was a group of uh, young kids, um, I say young kids, they were, 60, uh, roughly, I think, 15 to 18, that were all getting baptised. I felt God say to me, I want you to do a little painting for each of them. So all I did was I got a card, and you can buy packs of just plain white cards like this. I put masking tape around the edges, and this isn't the card that I gave them, but um, here's an il two illustrations of other ones that I've done since. Is... They're just small enough sizes that you get to play and experiment. Um, if you like it, great. If you don't, it's no big deal. <laughs> you know what? The beauty of acrylic, if you're working acrylic, or even if you're working in watercolor, because if you could go over a watercolor piece with acrylic paint, you could go over watercolor with fine liners and experiment that way. But I've got a little one, where is it? Um, yeah, so I've just put those on top of that. Let me just check here. Yeah. I was just experimenting just on a piece of paper. And if I show it from here, it looks quite muddy, the colors that it ended up producing. And so I was like, okay, I let it dry. And if I bring it in close, I then lay it on top. I made a little stencil with just a sheet of paper for a little heart on top, just to, to mess around and play with. Um, and you know what? God can layer things in your life. He can layer and teach you to layer and just play. So even something that looks messed up, don't feel necessarily, oh, that's the end of the world. It doesn't matter. You know what? You can always add to it. You can always... The other thing you can do is you can always scrape back if it's acrylic. You know what? Don't feel afraid to get a piece of um, kitchen roll, dab off the watercolour and draw out the colour if you've gone splodge with stuff that you don't like. Use a dry pen or a dry piece of tissue and dab it all up or scrape it back. Um, it's not the end of the world. And I think if you can learn to be playful in what you do, you'll find God can use not just the end picture, but the process that you've gone through to get to that picture to inspire you. 
because sometimes it's been the the transition and the journey has been as much as the um, revelation has been a lot of the revelation than necessarily a beautiful finished piece of work. <laughs> um, and the style of this stuff that I'm playing around with is just very unlike how I would have ever painted. Um, so it's just enjoy the playgrounds of creativity and just see where God ch takes you. I love that. And actually I wanted to add something like, as you were talking about that faith, um, so I took a four week class on the Bethel prophetic art thing or whatever. And you guys, I am like, I told you, I thought I drew like a three-year-old till the nine-year-old told me it wasn't a three-year-old, <laughs> but, um, yesterday we were, we went to like this yacht club place or whatever with my friends and their, their granddaughter who is nine and, and her parents really aren't, you know, walking with Jesus right now, whatever, but obviously the grandparents are. So they're always trying to like bring Jesus in the conversation, of course, and so we went, so me and the grandma and the grandchild were, we were all hanging out at the pool. And so she was swimming for only a couple of minutes, but I thought, oh, I'm just going to be sitting here. So I had bought some watercolor paints just to like mess around with, you know, make rainbows, stars, hearts, like those based flowers, <laughs> super, super basic. And um, next thing I know, she comes over and she's really keen to, you know, like, do it too and I'm like you know I'm just chilling so I'm like sure anyway I'm like well what do you want and she's like a scorpion and I'm like <laughs> you know I'm like I can't I can barely do a heart you know so I I remember like Lee and some others they look up how like look it up online and then they try to copy it well <laughs> copying skills need a lot of work as well but anyway, I drew an outline because I thought, okay, I can outline and then we can watercolor it in because if we try to do this freestyle, it's definitely not going to look like a scorpion. Anyway, so let me show you what happened. This is actually what we ended up creating. And the funny thing is, she's the one that did all the really cool details and, and uh, layering on it. But here's the part that's really amazing is, do you know what this opened up actually was for me to start talking to her about Jesus? And so I started to be like, hey, so um, let's talk about like, where, where do we see Jesus? What's he saying about the colors and all this stuff? And she's like, well, how do you hear from Jesus? So we probably spent a good 20, 30 minutes working on this crazy looking scorpion, but it actually invited an invitation where we actually, you know, we're talking about how she can hear Jesus speak to her. And she did have a little bit of like a little bit. I think there's more breakthrough that obviously needs to come. But the funny part is we finished the pool. We went out to dinner. We were at dinner for like an hour or something. And then and we're talking about a bunch of other different things at this point. And then, um, she says, well, Heather, are you coming back to Austin? So I said, oh, I'm going to England in two weeks. And I was like, I don't know. And she's like, well, why don't you ask Jesus what he says? <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, out of the mouth of babes. Right? So then I was like, okay, I will ask Jesus. <laughs> so I felt like I heard the word sometime. So I don't know when, but, but I thought, how incredible that this little opportunity of me, I'm like, I can't draw worth anything. But God used it to at least start the conversation and engage her in realizing that we can talk to Jesus anytime, you know, we want, even though she's still practicing on learning exactly how to do that. But that's what my lack of artistic skill did invite. And so I'm like, anyone can do it and it can invite conversations. So I just felt like that was something important to share. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. Because I, I think, you know, people feel restrained by their, their abilities to sometimes draw something that this isn't a, um, uh, what's that game, Pictionary. <laughs> this isn't a game of Pictionary where it's like, okay, I'm going to draw a cat. Does it look like a cat? Um, because you know what, even as somebody who uh, um, enjoys art and is quite creative and stuff like that, if I was going to draw a picture of a cat, I would, it would probably look like something like that my, like a nine-year-old would, would draw. Um, unless I had a picture um, in front of me that I was using for reference, because that is not the gifting that I have. And I think, you know what, sometimes we, we put pressure on ourselves to perform something. And I would say colors and simplicity, God can use as much those things as he can as some complex thing. One of the things with the um, these girls that I did um, these cards for, 
for one of them on the back of the card um god told me to take a pic one thing i would say is, which is also quite useful and quite good is take pictures during the process of drawing or painting whatever it is it's great for reference to whatever is inspiring you to actually just you know what you don't have to be creative in order to take a photo you can to capture whatever it is that God is bringing revelation to you. For me, I walk around the park um, quite regularly and God nearly always brings some kind of revelation to me about whatever's going on in the park. And that time is a pressure time because I literally, I get to walk around it uh, <laughs> once and then I need to be on, on my way and doing the jobs that I need to do for the day. It's literally, that's my, my time with God. I get a, 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 one circuit of the park and um, then I'm on my way and I don't have time to stop and sketch. But what I do do is I capture it with photographs and things like that. But one of the things God told me to do, so that's the husband just popping his head around. He's <laughs> <laughs> seeing you all having fun. Oh, yes. <laughs> He's oh, looking okay. after the kids. Okay, we're having fun. Too. Earlier today, um, I was on a... Uh, our church prayer meeting in the morning on uh, on Zoom, and my kids started playing the drums and everything. So it's like I he had to ma I make sure he was around to look after them while I'm uh, <laughs> talking. Um, but one other thing that God said to me was take a picture of the palette that you're using. So uh, if I can find, uh, I don't know whether you can see that or not. Really, maybe pull it back a little. Is that, I don't know whether you can Oh, yeah, there, oh, there it is. That's better. It. It's the way that yep. it's going. Yeah. On that palette, there is a lot of colours. But there is one colour missing. Oops. <laughs> and the colour that's missing is green. And one of the things that God, sometimes God shows you things or gives you revelation, not in what's there, but sometimes what isn't there. And so I said, okay, God, one what am I to do? So I painted a little picture on the front for this girl and I, I built it up in layers and every colour on my palette was in the picture and it was nothing, it was no no special lip picture, it just, um, it was just lots of layers, oops, um, lots of, oops, I can't see. Yeah, I think if you pull um, it back. So the, it, it, it's the one on the bottom, but it's, there was lots, all the pinks, the purples, the yellows, the orange was on it. And then God said to me, I want you to paint green on the back. And so, which is where oh, she's pulled it off. I want you to paint green on the back. Oh, right. let me see if I change that angle back. Will that work? Oh. For some reason, my the light on this is reflecting badly. Let's see if I can try again. There oh, we, go. we go. Yep. So on the back, I painted this. I didn't have green in my palette. So I had to use the blues and the yellows that were available to me. And it's not a pretty picture. It is just an assortment of blues and greens. Some of them are olive greens, some are forest greens, some are lime greens, um, all that kind of stuff. And what I felt God saying for this girl was, you know what, don't compare yourself to others. Don't look at other people's palettes and say, Lord, they've got that. They've got this. What about me? That is missing from my palette. What's, why haven't I got that? And what God is saying sometimes is, what do you have? When I went to David's tent that first year, I didn't have the canvas and all, the, all, all of the stuff. My painting was you painted mostly with kids' poster paints on wallpaper lining paper. And God sometimes says, not what don't you have, but what do you have? Start with what you've got. And I think that for everybody, start with what you do have. What do you have? If it's just kids' poster paints and a bit of lining paper, then start with that. God can use kids' poster paints and lining paper. God can use scorpions. God can use the lack of, of green. And what God showed me with this was 
when I, in explain to her, I, I said, you might look at others and say, this is missing from my life. But what God says, I've given you everything you need to have green. But what I want you to do is I want you to experiment. I want to stretch you beyond what you would naturally go. If I gave you green, you would use it straight out the tube from off the palette onto your picture. But if I don't give it to you, you will have to test and see what blue and what yellow equals what kind of green am I, am I looking for? Do I want that forest green or do I want the lime green? Do I want that olive green? And God says, you know what? You're going to have to test things out. And I think sometimes God wants you to test things out. He won't necessarily hand things to you on a platter. But he says to you, look, not just at the obvious, but the unobvious, because of I've given you everything you need. And sometimes he'll say, you created a beautiful forest green, but you don't need that right now. But you know what? You might need that in seasons ahead. You might use that in seasons ahead. And so, like for me, I created, I created little test charts for myself. The true color is at the top. And then I added a different color to work through the different shades. So it was yellow and I added different blues or a white. And I've only done the startings of that. But you know what? It gives me a point of reference and I've noted what it was that I did to get to that. So, you know, if God gives you something, sometimes take note of it and just write a note which helps you remember, how did you get to this place? Because God wants sometimes, he, like um, Heather says, bread comes from heaven. It is one little bit that is on the next bit for the next bit, for the journey of what is to come. You might just have the first breadcrumb and somebody else has the next one. When I say the word dormancy, it, 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 different people will might think of different things when you say that. And so I think when you get that, when I, I needed to look into it, when I, when I wanted to bring something more out of volcano, I had to look into the word and its meaning and the things behind it. So sometimes when God gives you something, God's saying, I want you to dig deeper. Don't be afraid to dig deeper, but don't be afraid to simplify things either. That's so good. That's so good. Um, so we only have about five minutes left now. Um, so what I'm thinking is, why don't we give people homework? <laughs> So I know we had talked about this, the seed um, aspect, but it could be anything, but I don't know, like if faith, what would you commission us to leave here with something that we could kind of do in our own quiet time with the Lord and explore with what the Lord wants to say to us? Um, yeah. If you have any thoughts on that and then we'll wrap up. <laughs> you know what? Even take the word dormancy and ask God what he wants you to take from that. And you know what, you might want to paint a picture, you might want to just look it up, you might want to see what God pulls out. Maybe it's something for you, maybe it's something for somebody else. Um, is it a colour? You know what, different things evoke different things for different people. Um, like I said, for me, red often represents God's blood or his healing and restoration and things like that what uh, green for me is often growth but that doesn't necessarily mean the same for other people they might have different meanings so I would challenge you to take it and see what you can produce see what God wants to give you and you don't have to do it in color even you could do it monochrome you can use pen and inks you might distort it you might draw something in if I used a fine line pen or um, a dip pen and ink and then I just sprayed it with water. The colors would fuzz. The picture would fuzz. Does God want you to bring things into perspective or does he want you to take things out of perspective? So, um, and you know what? I think the, the quick one of the leaves is a good illustration if you wanted to do um, as well. The other thing that God dropped into my heart was, um, you know what, if you're not necessarily creative, but you can still be creative, is if I gave you a pile of leaves 
what would you do with it? And you could just take a photo of it, of how you would arrange them on a page. And do you want me to say how I'd interpret it or not? Yeah, well, just explain like how you had shared before about, you know, where's the spacing and where are you putting like some of the questions that you were asking so people can engage with that mm -hmm. with the Holy Spirit themselves. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Kind of the so, when God dropped it in, so when God dropped that into my heart, I just did this little um, very, very quick thing. So this is what I'm saying. If God gives you something, it doesn't have to be a big worked out drawing. It can literally be on a scrap of paper that you happen to find at hand just so that you've got reference to it. So the first one was my envisage, if you had a sheet of paper like this, is a few leaves sporadically spaced. And God said to me, that could mean, you know what, with the big gaps, sometimes God says, take some time out. I want to deal with you and I want to focus on you. There's other people around and there's other people in your life and stuff like that. But you know what, I want to separate you and set you aside to give you that insight spend that time with you and stuff like that then the next picture god gave me was all the leaves tightly packed together all next to each other and that is almost the opposite of the other one it's like god saying you know what come side by side your brothers and sisters you're part of a body you are needed in order to knit that blanket together you're needed they don't want gaps have a big blanket and then a big hole in it. God wants you to stand side by side. Then the next picture God gave me was like the layering of just like lots of leaves on top of each other in lots of layers. And God says, you know what? I want to, to start with one layer and then I want to build on what you've learned on that. And I want to build and I want to bring in healing. I want to bring in restoration. I want to bring in new things into your life and I will layer them up. And I will make it, <laughs> I've almost just got a picture of a big um, feathery duvet and it's coming into winter and you know what, you're, the more layers and the more fluff to it, it's like on a winter's night, snuggled up with it wrapped around you um, on the layering. And then the next one was, if you imagined um, Pringles all poured out in rows, <laughs> They'd all be kind of uniform and stuff like that. So I felt like God saying, you know what, um, sometimes, sometimes, you know what, people want things ordered. God is saying, you know what, bring things into line, bring things into order in your life, because that will help you in the way forward if, if things are brought into line and ordered. And the last one was making a picture. So... I had a, a picture of these leaves, either making a hedgehog or a flower or something. And you know what? Everybody can take something simple like leaves and get something prophetic out of it. You don't have to be able to paint. You don't have to be able to draw. You can use what is around you that God gives you. If you allow him to speak in and through whatever you're doing, he can do it. The only limitation often is us. So good. There's even a verse. Cheryl, you're on mute. I have a quick question. Do you, where do you live at? I'm in Bromley, near, um, South London in the UK. UK, okay. Can I share something? Yes. Yeah. So I've never done this before, but while we were talking, I have produced a picture. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, awesome. Wow. I love it. So does, I don't know if anyone's got a prophetic word about that or am I meant to get that for myself? Well, what, when you created it, like, what did you feel the Lord was like, maybe showing you some of the meanings behind either the colors or what the, maybe even what some of the shapes might represent to you? Um, let me turn it around. Hold, hold on a minute. And by the way, that is so awesome. I love that you were inspired <laughs> in new creativity. Praise the Lord. Yeah, my first well done, picture. <laughs> Thank you, Faith. We live around the corner from each other. So I think Faith is probably more impressed than I am because she knows what I'm like. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I felt that maybe what God was saying through this picture was little, you see the little cells and things there? Uh-huh, that's what I thought it was. I just started drawing little circles and I thought, wow, like there are people that I look after, that I pray over, that are like around me. Um, it could even be my church, you know, the people that I am hopefully discipling, looking after. And, um, it's going to go far, like God's going to gonna bring things out of it. Oh, you that's know, and awesome. when I started drawing these little lines like that, I thought, I felt God saying, no, go further, go further, go right to the edge of the, of the paper. And I felt God was saying, you know, he's going to do things. And even though sometimes these lines, I felt those lines going the wrong way. You know, I just thought maybe I should just, when things go against, I should just let it go and give it to him. Yeah. That's so good. I love that. And you guys, if anyone else watching right now has more inspiration about it, please unmute yourself and share. I will share a little bit. Um, one, I love that. And I think that that's the point of prophetic art as well is like asking God what he wants to reveal to you. Because one of the things that um, I like to tell, say to people all the time is like, there's that phrase, right? Where a picture can speak a thousand, a p- picture is worth a thousand words, right? But so can we get a thousand words from a picture? And in fact, the other day, uh, a couple of days ago at this home group that I did this prophetic workshop, I showed um, Faith's picture of her uh, David's tent with the six pictures, abstract looking art. And I had everybody pick a picture and then I walked them through some breadcrumbs to get a prophetic word based on the picture that they chose. Well, what was interesting is I kind of got curious because Holy Spirit likes to do themes. And I said, hey, like what number? Because I numbered the pictures. So I was like, what number did you guys get? And four of the eight or nine people had gotten the same number. And so they let's say it was all three. So I'm like, oh, my gosh. So that meant that four of them had the same piece of art that God highlighted. And so I said, one of the questions I'd ask is, what is the title? And so then the other guy was like, what What did everyone's title? What was everyone's titles for the same picture, right? And all the titles were completely different. And I love that because God speaks to each of us uniquely and individually. So I love how like you just got that with your picture. When I was looking at your picture, the lines that were going in the other direction, I saw like tic-tac-toe. And I felt like God was saying that, And I heard the phrase, you're always going to win. And he's going to show you the strategy on how to win. And particularly, I want to add, now that you kind of thought maybe the enemy is kind of coming in, you know, at times or whatever, but all the more you will always win because there's always a way to win with God, right? He always has a strategy to win when the enemy comes in. And the other part that really stood out was the, like you said, the little thing. I don't know what those are. But I feel like I I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like in the ocean or in actual cellular stuff. But it reminded me of like the something. It's like so vague because I studied this like 20 years ago. But I feel like it's like where they they're receptors, they're sensory receptors. And I felt like God is going to make you really sensitive to those around you, like their antennas to pick up what's going around and the nucleus center is going to, you're going to pick up what's going on. So that new growth, but based out of heaven can start to happen around you. And then I'm sure there's more on the colors and everything, but does anyone else here have more or any uh, prophetic inspiration from her picture that you want to share? Yeah. James. That's why I got Cheryl was the more I saw it. You know, sometimes if, if you've got a cat or a dog and let you sort of roll back the hair and then it's you can obviously see like the sort of skin section and I got the word dig deeper and I felt as if God was saying dig deeper Cheryl now I don't know if that's like uh, something that's going on in your life at the moment and God's sort of saying you know the more you dig into it the more 
I will be sort of revealing what's happening in the, the weeks or the months ahead. But I, I got the expression oh, dig deeper. Uh, I, I, found this, I found this very encouraging this session. I am not really an artist. My, my wife, uh, as Heather knows, she is very artistic. She She's tried to tell me about all this colour <laughs> a thousand times faith. Uh, <laughs> but what really has encouraged me, like she's doing, she does jewellery, she does everything type of thing, but uh, this is some of our latest creations. But uh, what I was sort of semi-thinking from all the things you've sort of shared is like so often in a picture or from your creation, as you can see so much uh, and like, you know, it might be up close or it might be uh, like far away and or is it a memory of your thinking and like you've got a picture there, I think it was a lion away in the, the table. Uh, yeah, and one thing that I did get was when I think of volcano, like I went to the Westman Islands, which is off the Iceland, and we were there. I was there about say 10, 15 years ago, but it had been 25 years since the volcano had been active. And the guy who took us across this section of town says, Now, whatever you do, you have to keep on walking or your shoes will melt. Wow. And sure enough, there was still bits of steam 25 years after the volcano. And I got a sort of sense for you, Faith, that, you know, sometimes you feel as if time has moved on or things that you've done in the past that you need to sort of pick up again. And I get a real sense from that word volcano for you is like, look, that lava is still there. It's still active. And that heartbeat of your faith and love for everyone is still there. There's many people who look at you. And what I, I got this at a picture earlier on in the Facebook session that say if you were at a stall selling something, you know, people can go past, see your work, but it's like they get a shock and a surprise to see the deeper side of you, Faith. Mm -hmm. I get a real sense of that. And all the things that you've shared, like, uh, as I say, I'm amazed, like, how you, just a bit like Andrea, like, she can bring so much out, talking about the different colours, the different shades, and as I say... I got a real sense for you is I think people who surround you get a surprise at the depth of the person behind the name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. Well, that was awesome. And Cheryl, mm -hmm. I just say well done at doing your first piece <laughs> of prophetic art. <laughs> <laughs> you know I always tell people I'm here for the one you know like I, I was telling Faith I said I don't know how many people are gonna come I said but if there's just one <laughs> you know and I know there's there's much more than one but still it's just that I just encouraging me so much and I'm excited for you because Cheryl to be honest I'm not an artist either but like I have been dabbling in it now and and doing some things and I'm like huh I wonder what the Lord's gonna release and Faith it is what you said in fact, there's a scripture that I, I even wrote in my book and I tell people all the time, blessings, Lorraine, is um, it says that again, talking about the Israelites, it says again and again, they limited God, preventing him from blessing them. <laughs> so how often do we limit God? He wants to give us the increase. He wants to give us the blessing. You know, I always see it like, but we want to stay in our comfort zone, but God's like, I want to give you the increase, you know, whatever that is, mm -hmm. creativity or something else. But often we're the ones limiting God. It's not God that's limited. So love what you shared there, Faith. So, yeah. All right. Well, I don't know, Faith, do you want to like 
close us in prayer, like impartational prayer, and we'll wrap this up. This has been amazing. Thank you so much. Is there any last questions have. or anything before we wrap oh, up yeah. or anything anybody wants me to pray for specifically? No. You never know. Um, just I think maybe that um I'll become more prophetic, you know, like yeah. Um, and I won't be afraid of being prophetic, you yeah. know, because I think sometimes if I share a prophetic word, yes, <laughs> you have if the I key. share a prophetic word. I'm releasing word. it to you right now. You have the key. Amen. I'm having you. He's saying yes and amen. <laughs> amen. Yeah. So just that I would um, be brave and bold and not worry afterwards because sometimes bring a word and I think oh no you know <laughs> oh why did I do that and then I worry that the other person doesn't like it or they go you know what I mean you get all in a tiz about it I don't know if you say that in America get in a tiz I don't think we might we might say tizzy you know tizzy, um, okay. Cheryl I will say before faith praise like um, I did write a book that actually helps with this tremendously for there's lots of people have breakthroughs. So it's breadcrumbsfromheaven.org. It's an ebook. I just released it like in the last two weeks. That was God then released me out of the cave. So now I can have friends and things again. It's great. Um, but I just know that people have had a lot of breakthrough from reading it and just like um, even just my ministry revealing the heartbeat of God. Like that's, what we've been training up using those processes for the last two years and people have just grown tremendously. So if you're looking into more prophecy, I guess I would recommend that. <laughs> so, yes. And yeah, anyone else? I might have to go in a minute. Yep. That's cool. Back to you, Faith. Okay. Father God, I just thank you for, Every seed that you've sown today, ask that the seed will not just lay dormant, but it shall be watered. The sun will draw it out. The Holy Spirit will bring forth life and it shall blossom, it shall bloom. And I, I just ask that um, <laughs> for those that are creative and those that aren't, that Lord, that you'll give them revelation in just the little things that are around them that you was I thank you that you you're not limited by our limits I thank you that <laughs> you're the God who is able to bring revelation in all sorts of things you you gave you did so many parables in the Bible in order that we might understand things from the perspective of wherever we're at so I ask Lord that you'll help each and every one here, Lord, and everyone that's been on that listens to this, that you will just impart something by your spirit, that you will bring that revelation, that you will help that prophetic gift within people to just come out, Father God, that they will, they will see things with new eyes from a heavenly perspective. Lord, even as an eagle soars, and the eagle, when he soars, he sees things from a completely aerial position that somebody on the ground would never even kind of wouldn't even dream or see. And he can fly up to such a height. It's unbelievable. And he uses the storms of life. When he knows there's a storm coming, he positions himself into onto a higher place so that the, when the winds come, he will soar on the winds of that storm and he rises above it. So Lord, I ask that you will help everyone to rise on the winds of the storms, that they shall not go through it, but they shall rise above it and see that which is going on beneath them. But Lord, they will look forward onto the new horizon upon the new dawn, the new day and the new word and the new life that you are bringing and imparting into their life. I speak forth prophecy, I speak forth creativity. I speak it. Because of Lord, you're the word that speaks and it happens. You speak, you say, I have the, um, a seed as small as a mustard seed. And we speak to our mountains and they shall be removed and they shall be removed. So Lord, any, any seeds of doubt, Lord, that they will be removed. And Lord, we plant in a seed of creativity, a seed of faith, a seed of 
um, of prophecy and of revelation and impartation and Lord wisdom with how, what to do with those things Lord help give wisdom as well in Jesus name I pray amen amen yes well that was powerful thank you so much faith for sharing your wealth of wisdom that was incredible <laughs> all right well we finished i mean i'm still like i don't know if faith's in, but if anyone wants to say anything you're welcome to stay and chat for a minute but we are finished so thank you all so much this has been amazing <laughs> thank you for organizing it was great yeah yeah thank you thank you for everyone okay very, very encouraging very, very. Blessings, everyone. <laughs>